Hello, welcome to this video which is on seam allowance and it's also on hems. So this is video video two on the very basics of how to sew. So first we'll look at seam allowance and then we'll look at hems. They'll both be in the same video because they're both short explanations. So seam allowance is when you cut a, a garment to make, then you don't just cut the panel so that it, so that the, it meets at the seam what you need to do is cut it slightly bigger so there's a small amount that's left over inside the seam. So that small amount is called the seam allowance. Um, so on most patterns, if you are gonna cut from a pattern rather than make your own design, uh, usually the seam allowance on this as a standard is five eighths of an inch or it's one and a half centimeters. So if, you're, if what you're making needs that seam allowance to be something else then you would have to know this and adjust this or if the pattern has a different seam allowance you also need to you need to just recognize what the seam allowance is before you begin um, you also need to know what seam type you're doing beforehand because some seams when we do the five seams that are in this series i'll explain with each seam if there are any differences to the seam allowance but you need to know what type of seam you're doing beforehand to know if you need a regular seam allowance or if you need a slightly different seam allowance. Um, and you also need to know the allowance for your hems um, unless the edge is going to be left raw. So a hem, which is the second half of this video, is basically anything that's on the very edge of a garment. So, so this would be a hem on my collar. Um, this is a hem here. On the end of my sleeve and you you need to know what allowance you're getting for the hem but the hems usually um, it's not as important to know the seam allowance for the hems because the hem can be usually a little shorter or a little longer uh, so for example if my sleeve went to here or to here it wouldn't it wouldn't matter the only time it does matter is if that hem is meeting up with another hem. So for example, on the front of a jacket, your hood hem needs to come to the edge of the jacket. So there it is important. So here on the sewing machine, you can see an example of the hem allowances. So you have one eighth of an inch, three eighths of an inch, five eighths of an inch. And you also have it in centimeters on most machines. So this would be one and a half centimeters which lines up with five eighths of an inch and two centimeters. So that's a rough idea of how big seam allowances look. So as I said, that's, that's seam allowances. You just need to know what your seam allowance is going to be. The standard is five eighths of an inch or one and a half centimeters. So onto hems now. In a second, I'm gonna show you how to sew a hem, but first we just need a small overview of what a hem is. Um, so a hem is just the edge of your, the edge of something just needs to be finished, uh, usually. Sometimes it is left raw, but usually, almost always, it's not left raw, it's finished in some way. So you can either have a single hem, which is where you just fold, fold some fabric over a single time, it looks like that. So this would be it left completely raw. That would be a single hem. And we're also going to look at a double hem, which is folding it over one more time so that the raw edge is actually encapsulated inside the hem. So it's rolled over twice. So there are some considerations with this. The single hem obviously is less thick than the double hem. So the double hem, you're doing a single hem and then hemming it again. So there's actually one, two, three layers of fabric rather than a, a regular single hem is just two layers of fabric. So it's 50% uh, thicker, I, I suppose, than a single hem. And of course, it needs more like seam allowance for the hem, it needs more hem allowance. Um, so those are just the small considerations, but generally 
a double hem, you cannot go wrong with it because everything is completely encapsulated. Whereas a single hem, if that fabric frays over time, it's going to fray over time. Um, so there's also, there's a stitch when you're hand stitching called the blind hem stitch, which makes it completely invisible from the good side of the fabric um, to see the stitch. So in my hand sewing series, which I'm going to do very soon, um, there's going to be a blind hem stitch. But if you're machine stitching, there is no blind hem stitch option. So that, that's just a hand stitching stitch specifically for hems. So now I'm going to, we're going to just quickly look at actually sewing hems. So this is some sample fabric that we're about to hem. So as you can see, this, this fabric itself frays very easily. So you can easily just pull, pull the edge of this apart. So for this, I definitely would not do a single hem, which is folding over once. For this, I would definitely fold it over once and then fold it over again for a double hem. And that way, everything is encased completely within the hem. So I am going to do a single hem on the side that I haven't just ruined, um, just to show you what a single hem looks like, because a lot of things you can do a single hem for. But then we're going to do a double hem, which is definitely what I would do for this fabric. So the single hem, you'd want to fold over like this, and we will get to the actual basics of sewing in the next um, the video after next, so don't worry about the actual sewing itself. So when we're sewing it, what we would want to do with it is fold it over. You can use um, pins if you like, or you can press it, which we'll be covering in the next video. And then, um, and then it's it will be folded, so you wouldn't need to hold it like I'm doing. And then what we would do is just sew it like this. And then once it's once it's all sewn, then we would have. A hem left so this would be what it looks like on the good side so this is the edge of your um, you the end of your sleeve or the edge of your garment and this is what it would look like on the bad side so as you can see we wouldn't be able to leave this as a single hem we would have to double hem this so now to do this double hem what we're going to need to consider is that there's a slightly bigger um, allowance that the material that is going to be lost at the edge of this because we're folding it over twice so here i didn't really care about it that's a massive hem really um so on this one we'll try and get it looking like what a regular sized double hem would look like so whatever we want the thing the allowance to be we've got to remember that the seam allowance the edge of the garment is not going to go to here it's going to go to here okay so this is where our allowance goes to, but on the double hem, this is actually folded over to there. So I'm just going to eyeball it. So we want whatever the, whatever the first roll is needs to be slightly less than half of what the finished size will be so that we can then turn it over and it is a proper double hem. So this is my um, double hem ready to go now. So I'm just going to quickly sew it. So what I do is I, I get it under the foot and then start it off and then once it's going you can then pin it in place with the needle itself go a bit further down fold it exactly where you want it to be 
and then fold it over. And with really rough fabrics like this one, as well as folding it inside, we're also going to have to take something, a blade from scissors or clippers, and tuck everything in like that so that everything is tucked in properly. And then once it is, and you're happy with the size of the hem that you've made, then you can carry on. So I, I normally do my hems so that this, the stitch is within one eighth of an inch of the edge of the hem. So again, I'm gonna fold it over twice here. Um, I'm gonna put my needle in it there just in case it moves. Put some slight pull on it um, away from the needle towards me. And then as I do, as I do that afterwards, I'm gonna tuck everything in. But first, I need to just help it along a bit because this is a quite a, um, a difficult fabric. It doesn't want to fold. And then once it is folded, I can then use a blade to tuck it in properly. And then once it's tucked in and I'm happy with it, I can then continue again on my one eighth of an inch allowance. So then when I'm done, on this side, everything is inside properly, but on this side, the hem is finished and there'll be no fraying from that. So that's the very basics of a hem. So this is a double hem. On the other side, we had a single hem. Sorry, one thing I should also mention is that um, normally when we sew a double hem, I don't know if you can see, um, but the, the thread on this side doesn't look very good. And that's because um, I actually did it backwards so that this side was face up for the camera. So I'll quickly do it how we should actually do it, which is we should, we should do our hem in the exact same way that we just did. So we roll it so that it's half the size and then roll it one more time. And I only bought this fabric this morning. Um, I wanted one that was a different colour on either side so that you can see easier. But actually it's probably the worst fabric I ever could have picked for, um, for folding it easily. So once we have folded it, what we would then normally do when we're actually sewing it is turn it around that way so that our needle is going in from the top. So if we did that, then we would just sew the same distance from the edge as we sew our seam. So it would look like this. So I'm sewing one eighth of an inch from this, the good edge on this side, and then we've got the good thread on this side of the hem which people are seeing. So then on the bad side, this is what it looks like, but it doesn't matter because it's, it's the bad side, no one's actually gonna be seeing it and it still looks pretty good. We've caught the hem in it completely. So that's the underside of it and that there's no fraying from there. And that's what it looks like. And then that's what it looks like on the good side. So that's what he would actually do is sew from the top not from underneath. So that's that's the end of the video on, on hems and also we covered seam allowance. So in the next video we're going to be looking at what makes seams look very professional, very finished, very well and that's a process called pressing. So we're gonna look at pressing, um, which is with an iron in the next video.